We've got an amazing poet here tonight, Salvin Shahal. Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm excited to see you tonight. I'm excited to, you know, just spread the light and hopefully the audience and anybody else out there just thinks or feels differently after my foreign performance. So I'm just, I'm just blessed to be here. All right, very nice. So tell us a little bit about your poetic style. So my poetic style is very much inspired just from hip hop, to be honest. Uh, I've been a fan of hip hop since I was a kid. I started writing and performing about three, four years ago. So my style is very in your face, whether you like it or not, and it's the truth, so to say. So a lot of style derived from the Indian culture and just also just uh, growing up listening to hip hop and being around uh, my mentors and local poets, they've really inspired me to um, take the mic and take the audience with so much power and just reflect that, that energy right back to everybody else. Okay, I think it's really cool and very, very interesting how you kind of mesh, like you said, a cultural aspect and then like also hip hop. So yes. how did you come about to do that? Um, I just love the impact that hip hop gives and sometimes poetry does that as well, but individuals won't go to school writing in their car or go to the gym listening to poetry. So I wanted to make it to something to where it's really accessible and it's worked out for me. I'm just gonna let the performance speak for itself. Oh, very nice, very confident. Can't wait to see it. Uh, so where do you see yourself in the next couple years with your poetry? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Everything that's happened so far, I would have never imagined it in my life. At 20 years old, I wrote a book, published it. It did amazing on Amazon. So I'm just hoping that I can travel as much as I can, spread that light, meet amazing people and just build. So who knows really where I'm gonna be. It's up to the, the people that take me there. It's up to the people to take you there. Yeah. Also a humble guy, I like that. <laughs> Best of luck to you. It's Monday. This is a story about a girl who happens to be the happiest girl on campus. But she came to class late exactly at 9.45 cause her dad threatened her nine times with a 45. So all she wore was tears created by fear and a mouthful of blood that was moving by pain. Seeing her cry forever scarred my life. It's Tuesday, her name is Jasmine, and Jasmine happens to be a has-been who has been happy before, but now she's suffering. Cause her mother is struggling and her father is violent in his own home. She's too afraid to call 911, so she disregards the phone, and when he beats her, she takes hits of her own just to relieve the stress. It's Wednesday, and everyone knows the reason why she's always late. Because her silence screams the saddest story I've heard to this day. Screams that are louder than any school bell ringing. Quietest among hundreds of kids, but the footsteps seem to be the loudest ones. It's sickening. It's Thursday, and have I seen her? Honestly, it's been a while. She's been there trying to cover up new things, but the deepest scar she's been trying to hide is her smile. And she's so oblivious. She's oblivious to the fact that she's easy to understand, but hard to find, and as her grades dropped, her marks increased, and all you can see is that her clothing consisted of nothing but long sleeves, which made things just a little more obvious. It's Friday, and on top of this, it hurts me more when he hits her, because Jasmine isn't some random girl at school, so when child service is busting through the door, they told me I couldn't see my sister anymore. It's Saturday. She's back home with a mindset of her own. Her life is consisted of nightmares and her dreams are created by fables because all she thinks of is that someday some guy will look at her as an angel and put a halo around her finger. All by night making rounds around the house and all I can tell myself is let her be, let her be, let her be for I can come in between what I believe isn't a part of me. It's Sunday, her birthday. And I pray to God I can do each and every day, but for some reason God wasn't beside me. I woke up to my mother's silence, the stench of something different. And as I run downstairs to find out what's wrong, I see a new decoration hanging above our living room wall, my sister. And it kills me because I could have stopped all of this. Everyone knew how she felt, but I didn't because I am, I am, I am too selfish to realize what a real brother is. 